Vastava lies, but it's happening in the urban area right now. And the question becomes, as the as African country economy grow faster, whether that this trend is going to be uh, good witness in the rural areas. That needs to be said. Then you have the uh, rest of the world, if you take Asia and Africa out, uh, we have uh, Middle East, uh, Europe, uh, US and South America. You can see per capita consumption is very small amount. Uh, you know, uh, it's still around 18, 19 kilograms per person. But you will see steady increase in the per capita consumption due to various reasons. Uh, you know, can be immigration of Asian population into US or various other things. Uh, it's happening and the per capita consumption continues to rise in the rest of the world if you take the Asia and Africa out of the equation. So if you put everything together, all these uh, variations uh, happening in different parts of the world, if you put everything uh, together and if you borrow some economic growth, uh, you assume how this country is going to grow economically in the future. This is what we have come up with uh, uh, by 2020, okay, by 2035, we will be needing additional 116 million tons of milk rice. Okay? So right now we are consuming around 440. Uh, 445 million tons. So we need an additional 116 million tons of rice by 2035. But if you look very closely, half of those needs will be by 2020. So by 2020, we will be needing around 56 million tons. By, by from 2020 to 2035, we will be needing only 60 million tons additional rice. What it means is we are, going to, we are expecting a significant slowdown in the consumption growth after 2020. Hopefully, the, if your assumption regarding the economic growth remains uh, or the holds good. So, so if somebody says uh, we, are produce, we, are, we are consuming right now and give an end point, that might give a very long signal to the policymaker saying that we are slowing down the consumption growth. We need to look at yearly basis because we need to produce quite a bit of rice by 2020. We may not need as much beyond 2020 or 2030. But at least in the medium term, the quite a bit of rice will be needed to feed the, to feed the world population there. And you can see the, uh, still, Asia remains the, <laughs> remains the focal point, the kind of a uh, center of rice uh, for a long time to come. Out of the 116 million tons, 67% is coming from the Asia. Uh, Africa is becoming very big. You know, they consume right now around 20 million tons. We are expecting them to more than double. The, their consumption by 2035. Uh, then, then, then the other thing is the uh, Americas and the rest of the world there. So, okay, so now I give you the one central story. We need 160 million ton. We need to produce additional 60 million ton by 2020. We are expecting a slowdown in the consumption growth in year 2020. <coughs> okay, where this is going to come from? Where this production is going to come from? This is what uh, I was looking at historically. To looking at the production and how much we have got from the yield, how much we have got from the area. You can see over time, yield has contributed to around 60 to 70 percent of the production growth. And the remaining 30 percent has come from the area. Okay? Be because between 1960 and 2010, we have added around 40 million tons of hectare. May not be physical land, may be higher crop intensification. But that is the amount of rice in here that has increased in the last 40 years. The question remains, what will happen to this area expansion? The one we have seen in the last 40 years, is it, will, it, will it continue? Or we have, we, have, we have seen the end of the physical uh, expansion of rice area? Because this morning, we, we listened from a lot of these uh, you know, panel members or keynote speakers <coughs> who are expecting rice area to decline due to various reasons. Uh, you know, urbanizations, uh, you know, non, other non-agricultural uses. If that is the case, if that is the case, the physical rice area is going to decline, the crop intensification is going to offset it, so you assume there will be no additional area in rice in the future. So we are stuck at 160 mil, million hectares. If that is the case, the almost all the consumption growth has to come from the yield growth. That's where the, that's where the critical thing is. We have, we have been able to feed the world both due to the yield and the area expansion. Area means both physical and the crop intensification. If we are now going to see that area factor in the, in the future, that means all the consumption growth has to come from the yield growth. What it 
means is, uh, this is just to show that uh, there is not much area available in the world. This is a very really old picture. You can see most of the available arable land in use is exhausted in South Asia, uh, Near East and Near Africa, East Asia. We have land available in, in Latin America, uh, South South Africa. Uh, maybe the climate change will make this industrial land, country land up suitable for rice production. We really don't know. We might be growing rice in Northern Europe 50 years down the road, but that's, uh, that's something we really don't know. But if you look at just uh, people talk about the land available in Latin America and South South Africa, I just want to show one graph there, uh, what's happening to Brazil. This is where most of the expansion is happening, and this is where most of the rice area is concentrated. When the expansion is happening, everybody thought uh, rice is going to expand in the, in the central west of Brazil. Uh, but if you look at the, the rice, what has happened, uh, it has actually declined. Rice has not acted as an appropriate cover crop in this newly virgin land which has come into production. But if you look at Africa, it's exactly opposite where uh, I look at it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk on Africa, but if I look at it this way, there are imports increase very, very, very steep increase in the imports. I look at it as flattening out of the imports in the last uh, probably 8 to 10 years. So they are, their import is going to stop between 8 to 10 million tons, primarily because their production growth has picked up. So the, the production growth you see in last 7, 8 years, that has matched the consumption growth, more or less. The reason because if you go back to my price chart, the, the, the rice prices have been rising in the last 8, 9 years long before even the crisis. I think the question is whether the African farmers are actually responding to this global rice price increase and producing more. Maybe Asia was responsible for what was happening in Africa for a long time. The, the subsidies in Asia might have depressed the world prices. One minute. Okay. I depressed the world price. Maybe we are seeing the reversal of that goal in the future there. I just one or two slides there. Uh, so bottom line is that if we, if we want to feed the world, uh, we need to, the, the consumption growth has to be matched, the yield growth there. Just to say that the wild, in terms of the range, in terms of the yield, both in Asia and African countries, there's a lot of scope in terms of filling that gap. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's possible, what percentage accounts for economic, what percentage account for other things, but the, there is gap there, yield gap which can be closed and with the productivity can increase both in Asian and African countries. This is just to show the last slide before my conclusion showing that the, the, just the impact of rice research. Uh, this is the things we did using the global rice model which Eric was involved in developing that at ERI. Um, if we assume ERI is going to contribute 15 kilogram to yield every year, which is a very conservative estimate uh, between 2011 and 2035. So right now we are adding 15 kg to the global rice yield. So we are assuming every country will have 15 kg increase in rice yield because of Iri's rice research. If you do that, by 2035, Iri's contribution will be around, uh, in terms of meal equivalent of 225 kilogram. Just look at the impact of the, that uh, yield increase on the retail price decline in this country. These are the selected countries. And by doing that, we will be lifting 125 million people out of the poverty and we will be taking out 5 million hectares out of the rice into natural habitat or other more productive use. So what I, what I want to say that any kind, of, any kind of yield impact, any kind of yield increase has impact just beyond the poverty also it, it, it increases in terms of 